Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for the collective for Thursday, December 19th, 2019. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is dated for the 19th of December, that does not mean it has to resonate at that time. It can resonate at any moment for you, okay? Excellent. Um, really quickly, we do have happy hour going on tonight. Uh, that will be at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are unfamiliar with that, happy hour is when I go live on YouTube to do... Um, single question readings live for a discounted price so normally a, a single question reading is thirty dollars but i do it five dollars off during happy hour and there are only 10 slots available happy hour is really really fun um, it's a moment for us to connect here live on youtube um, and i can do a live reading for you right here um you know right here right now uh for a discounted price um, so there are only 10 spaces available. The floor is officially open. So if you would like to get on the list for that, you can go ahead and send payment to paypal.me slash divine conversations. Um, happy hour readings during happy hour are $25. Um, and please make sure to put your question in the notes section of your payment to, to just to expedite the situation so that I have your question ready to go so that I can, you know, move through. Yeah. And keep in mind that we are going to have a little unboxing at the very beginning of happy hour because I have some gifts that you guys have sent that I am super excited to open up. So we're going to start kick off happy hour with that. Also, um, uh, right before our happy hour session here on YouTube, I will be going live on Instagram just to do a, a collective energy check-in and update for the Insta fam. So if you are following me on Instagram and you would like to check that out, please don't hesitate to do so. And if you're not following me on Instagram, you can go ahead. I would love it if you if you would connect with me there. You can find me at divine underscore conversations. And I'm going to try to remember to put um, happy hour information in the description box of this video. Okay. So if you would like to get on the list and you don't quite remember what I said about it, um, check the description box. I'm going to do my best to remember to put it in there. Okay. Okay. So let's get into today's energy. So I don't, I guess, so the, I'm, I'm still kind of learning how to use this deck in the most efficient way um, that works best for me. And I was under the impression that I didn't have a pre-shuffle energy, but I do because as you guys may already know by now, and especially if you've been following Morning Coffee for some time since I've been using this deck, this is the vice versa deck and there are images on both sides of the cards. So you can't really escape um, the, the cards. Whereas like say with this one, the Golden Universal Tarot, there's only images on one side right okay so as i was channeling the energies today and connecting with the collective i saw the, f the immediately the first color that i saw was green um and again if you've been following you know at least for the last week or two two weeks at least um the main color i've been seeing is yellow uh like the color of the solar plexus now it also if you are new to my channel or to me as a reader I often see colors when I channel for people. Um, that's usually the first thing I see. And then those colors kind of guide me through, um, you know, what the message is for whomever I'm channeling for. And so the color has been lately has been yellow in which we were in the process of redefining our willpower and kind of reconnecting it with source and the will of source, divine will, the will of the universe and all that kind of stuff, kind of, which is, which was part of a process of, I want to say ego dissolution, not ego death, but ego dissolution to the point where it's, it's dissolving back and we're reintegrating more of ourselves on a conscious level with source, the divine, with the creator, with God, the universe, 
however you want to describe it yes so now the first thing the first color i saw today was green which which to me is beautiful because we are making progress that's the very first thing i think of when i think when i see that we're definitely making progress and we're coming more into our heart centers into our heart chakras and i was hearing i was channeling a message heart chakras are opening and space is being cleared that was the most important message with that space is being cleared for movement was the full message and then so i was shuffling the cards as i was doing this and nothing actually fell out but spirit said to stop here and when i looked it was the high priestess as an overall energy with the five of swords at the other on the other side of the deck but it, it's beautiful because look it's this five of swords where someone is like you know what i'm done fighting with you i'm done doing this so I really do feel like there are certain, there are individuals right now within the collective that I'm channeling for that are absolutely laying down the swords and they're not fighting for the same things that they used to fight for. Um, I mean, to give you a little more context, what I'm seeing is like someone that may have been very much um, patriarchal or very much uh, living from a place of strong indoctrination. And this could be someone that really was even an advocate for it you know what i mean was almost like you could you could almost call them an agent well okay no yeah you could call them an agent you know what i mean especially if we're speaking in terms of the matrix and it's so funny because um there have been a few comments lately i don't know if it's just been one i don't remember i'm so sorry if it was just one person or if it's been multiple people but there have been a few comments lately that have been in reference to the matrix <clears throat> And, I mean, I did watch the full trilogy maybe about two or three weeks ago. Um, and so, and I did mention that to you guys. So maybe that's why you're, you're connecting with it. But also, we're all kind of waking up from the Matrix. And that movie is so truthful. Like, it's almost scary how accurate that movie is. I mean, sure, it's it might be fantasized a little bit, and I'm putting that in heavy air quotes. Like it's it's so real. And someone even made the comment, <laughs> made the comment of how I kind of at, that there are certain moments in the readings that I've been doing where I sounded like the Oracle. And it's so funny because as I was watching that movie, I started to realize, holy shit, I am the Oracle. <laughs> like I totally, I would totally play that character. I could totally play that character. I love, I love, I mean, I loved that connection. But anyway, so w why I say the Matrix is because I'm using the term agent specifically. And in the Matrix, the agents are, or the agent is, because it's just, it's, it's, it's a program. The agent is a program that is basically an enforcer for the machines that created the Matrix to begin with in order to harvest energy and power from the life source of human beings okay so the agent is or agents is a program that are created to enforce the rules and the hierarchy of the matrix maybe okay so this what i'm seeing here okay with the green color of the heart chakra and the message of um, heart chakras are we're, we're, heart chakras are opening and awakening, and we are and, and and space is being cleared for movement. Coupled with the high priestess, the back of the high priestess, in which this kind of looks to me, this says that we have been let in on her secrets. Okay, we've received some sort of higher wisdom, divine knowledge, whatnot, whatever. Coupled with this five of swords here, someone is laying down their sword and is basically saying, "I'm no longer working for the Matrix." Period. That's what I'm getting from that. And it's beautiful. I love it. Welcome. <laughs> yes. Ah, all right, guys. So with that said, let's get into the rest of the message, yeah? Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Thursday, December 19th, 2019. 
Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're going to give this three shuffles, and then we will see what we've got for today. One. For the collective. Thursday, December 19th, 2019. Best messages, please, Spirit. What would you like to discuss with us? Ooh. To discuss with us today. All right, take a sip. Okay, here we go, kids. Best messages, please, Spirit. December 19th. What would you like to discuss with us today? Topic of discussion, topic of contention, topic of contention. I heard that again. Okay, this has been a topic of contention for a while, and it could have just been a topic of contention for you. Whatever it is you're leaving behind, whatever it is you're walking away from, in whatever ways you are, quote, stepping out of the matrix, blah, blah, blah. It's been, it's been a thing for a while, and it's been something that's been nagging at you for some time, and you're finally, it's like you're, you're tired, you're tired of the old way of being, yes, but you're also tired of listening to spirit nag, nag you about making some sort of changes in your life. Okay, we're going to stop here. Overall energy is the Wheel of Fortune. Okay. Uh, on the other side, we have the Queen of Pentacles. Ooh, wee. Ooh, okay. So the Queen of Pentacles is still giving us an energy of know your worth. All right. And again, it is still a feminine energy, maybe even the divine feminine um, that is influencing this within all of us. So it's the rise of the divine feminine that's influencing this. All right. So you have the five of wands, which is the explosive side of the card. You have the, um, the, the ace of wands and the magician. And then you also have the page of cups, the three of wands and the seven of wands. So first of all, I want, I want to start here I, because the first thing I'm hearing or picking up on with the Page of Cups, the Three of Wands, and the Seven of Wands is you're protecting your inner child uh, to a certain extent. It may not necessarily look or feel that way on the surface, but that is absolutely what you're doing here because you're protecting your, your sense of innocence. And it, I also kind of feel like you're allowing your inner child to lead the way in many respects. Um, I'm feeling an energy of... Um, giving your inner sense of purity and innocence um, and wonder and excitement way more priority and way louder or stronger of a voice than you have ever given it in the past. But that has a lot to do with the indoctrination that we all face. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So then you have the five of wands again with the ex with the explosive side of the card with the ace of wands and also the magician so there could be some inner conflict i i don't i really don't feel at this point i don't feel like there's too much inner conflict right now what i really feel like is this you um this is you facing the external reality facing maybe people that have been around you for some time a few people that you've uh, you've worked with uh, the, the indoctrination that you faced um this is external okay and, and it really feels like there's resistance in the people around you but i don't i really don't think you are doing much to allow that to stop you from doing what it is that you want to do or creating the life that you want to create, moving in the direction that you want to move in with the magician. I, I'm going to be completely honest with you. There's also a level of excitement <laughs> that I'm picking up on this. It's almost as if you're kind of like, like, yeah, yeah, you're walking away from the battle. All right. With that five of swords that came out in the in the pre shuffle. But also, <laughs> there's an energy of, yeah, come at me, motherfucker. You want to fight? Let's fucking fight. <laughs> I'll show you what's what. You want to mess with me? Listen, I've got a brand new attitude, and I bet you you're not going to like it. Mm -hmm. That's that five of wands right there. Just be careful, guys. I mean, don't go looking for a fight. But to be quite honest, at this point, I like that. Okay? Because it means you're standing up for yourself, especially with this seven of wands here. Okay? You're standing up for yourself. Now... Also, 
keep in mind that with the seven of wands there really isn't that much opposition and i think with the seven of wands here you might be in some ways you might be releasing a lot of the defenses you might be starting to realize that there isn't you, you really don't have that much to defend yourself against and that could very well be a realization that no one can really stop you from doing what it is that you want to do no one can really stop you from being the person that you want to be creating what it is you want to create unless you give them that power right no i mean everybody has the right to create what it is that they want period but the problem is we allow other people to tell us what is right what is wrong what is good what is bad instead of deciding that for ourselves okay so with this overall energy here you have the wheel of fortune which is the side of the card um that to me just really speaks to going with the flow um going through these cycles of death and rebirth and the knowledge and wisdom that comes with it okay and through that you start to cultivate a sense of self-worth with the queen of pentacles and especially with this rise in the feminine energy what i'm feeling especially for those who are more masculinely oriented in their energetic expression right Keep in mind, this has nothing to do with gender, you guys. Nothing to do with gender. This is all energy. We all have masculine and feminine energy within us. But with this rise of the divine feminine energy, and um, which is influencing an urge and a push to know your worth, right? Especially for those who are more masculinely oriented energetically, you are turning your backs, and you're saying, I am worthy of much more, I deserve much more, and I am not going to allow you to treat me this way anymore. Or what I really heard, and what I really want to say is, ever again. Now, I'm hearing topic of contention, okay, again, okay, I understand that, because that it is a very strong statement, that it, and, and, and in saying that, it's inciting feelings of fear of lack of stability well what if i'm going to if i would like like yeah okay it feels good it feels good to say this right now but what does that mean for the future what happens if i end up burning a bridge that i may end up needing at at the end of the day or later on down the road the queen of pentacles says honey don't even waste your time with that because if they're not willing to treat you the way you know you need to be treated right now if they're not willing to honor your worth then they, then you don't need them period there is not going to come a time where you will need them. Why? Because they don't respect you. They are using you. They are manipulating you. So no, burn that bridge if you really feel like it's necessary. See, you see, that kind of sounds very Queen of swords -ish, doesn't it? Well, in my opinion, as a reader, the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords are besties absolutely best friends they of all the queens in the deck the two of them see eye to eye the most in my opinion energetically speaking why because neither of them are going to take your bullshit the queen of pentacles however is way more compassionate she is like the mother okay she's the mother and the wife of the deck so she is so so her logic and her tough love and her sternness is definitely tempered with compassion and understanding and nurturance but she will not take your shit and the moment that she realizes that you have been and are planning on continuing to take advantage of her and take her kindness for weakness honey she will cut you out so quick and good luck she will turn her back so quick and good luck getting her to turn back around until you or they make a solid change and they follow through with it the Queen of Pentacles is one of those energies that is fully aware of the fact that actions speak way louder than words. Because it's only through action that you really can manifest anything in the physical world. Not only, but that's, that. I mean, taking action is a, a huge part of making something happen in the physical, right? And that's what the Pentacles represents, the physical. Okay, for, so for those more masculinely oriented energies, 
you're coming into that realization right now, or you have been, it's been, I'm, I'm hearing it's integrating right now. <clears throat> you're in the process of integrating this. And yes, it feels good. It's empowering. It's like, yeah, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, I got it now. I got it now, bitch. Say something, say something. <laughs> but just, you know, keep that in mind. Just temper that a little bit. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw out too many warnings around that right now because that feels good. That feels good. Okay. Um, I'm okay. So let's go into a little bit more definition. I'm hearing the golden universal tarot first. Okay, I'm going to use this to divine to, to to find to define what's going on a little bit more. We're going to start here. I want to look a little deeper into these energies for you right now. The Magician, the Five of Wands, and the Ace of Wands. What is it that you are creating? What is it that you're inspired to move towards right now? Let's look a little bit more into that. Actually, you know what? No, no. I want to go with the Epic Tarot for this. Epic Tarot. Yeah, that feels better. Right, because the epic tarot, especially when it comes to the wands suit, it talks about writing a story. And um, because wands is creativity, right? So we are writing a whole new chapter. Not even, a, that's that, see, not even a whole new chapter. In many cases, this is a whole new book. Okay, so yeah, I definitely want to use this deck. And I just, just to define this a little bit more. Ace of wands, five of wands, and the magician. One last shuffle here. Okay. Let's see. What is this? Jeez. Good. Oh, good. God. Go look at that. Look at that. There it is right there. The Ace of Books, y'all. Definitely writing a new book judgment it's in reverse though <gasps> ten of cups so okay so what is this new book you're writing it's the book of love it's bringing you the love that you desire the love that you've always wanted yes indeed honey ace of wands the emperor the ace of cups the star the three of wands this is the path that you are on okay King of Pentacles, yes! There's the king to the queen, so we are talking masculine here. This is most likely uh, the divine masculine. If you're, if we're talking twin flames counterparts, this could be your divine masculine counterpart, um, but this also could be the rise of the masculine within you. And what I'm getting with this king of Pentacles here is this is the masculine becoming whole and healthy and sane and grounded and well-grounded, well-manifested. This is the masculine healing himself. Or could be herself, because, you know, we could have um, women that are more masculine in energy. Judgment in reverse. But I don't mind that judgment is in reverse here, because what this feels like is you're finally answering the call. Like you're finally waking up. Okay? Mm, I should say that differently. You're allowing yourself to answer the call now. I like that. I like that. Okay. And those are all a separate one? Okay. So in this pile here, if I could pick it up, <laughs> we have, I'll look at this in a second. We have the Hierophant with the Queen of Wands, the uh, Knight of Swords, the Moon, and Death. So again, this is another, this is another depiction of the feminine rising and influencing a change. Because you have... Now, keep in mind, with this deck, this is, again, this is the Epic Tarot. So in this deck, you have um, the, the court cards are mystical creatures, right? So as you can see with the king, the king of pentacles, this is a dragon. Ooh, 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 sorry, guys. This is a dragon, right? Okay. The, the pages are <clears throat> unicorns. The knights are griffins. And the queens are uh, phoenixes, okay? 
And to be quite honest, this is, re I'm, I'm really glad I decided to go with this deck because this is really perfect. This is definitely a Phoenix from the Ashes Risen type of energy with this Queen of Wands in direct opposition to the indoctrination of the Hierophant. And the Knight of Swords here is definitely giving me an energy of communication, speaking truth. Um, it's also giving me that defense energy um, that is allowing you to fight back against any sort of opposition. And with the Queen of Wands energy here, this feels like the confidence, the confidence within yourself to take a step to make the move, to rise from the ashes, reborn, okay, brand new, all right? And I'm definitely seeing the balance between masculine and feminine energy in the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands, definitely. Then you have the moon and death, the end of illusion, secrets being revealed, transformation out of a time where you were asleep, where you were blindfolded, where you were blinded, maybe even blindsided. You might feel blindsided right now, especially with all of the realizations that you are integrating here with this judgment energy. Okay, definitely. Both judgment and the Queen of Wands is a very much a phoenix from the ashes, risen type energy. Judgment specifically, yes, throughout all decks, but especially in this deck with the Queen of Wands, the Queen's representing, being represented by a phoenix. I mean, come on, <laughs> come on, right? Okay, finally, this last pile here, hidden energies. Okay, these are hidden energies. I'm hearing what to look out for. Okay, you have the Knight of Pentacles, you have the Ten of Pentacles, you have the Eight of Wands, the Nine of Swords, but also with the Ace of Swords. So, Specifically, what I'm getting with this is this is the energy to face your fears. It's like whatever you've been afraid of, I'm hearing the indoctrination. So whatever you've been afraid of re removing or releasing yourself from, again, the indoctrination, you are receiving the, the sword of knowledge in order to cut all that stuff out and write this new book for yourself. Yes, Ace of Books to the Ace of Wands. I'm oh, sorry, well, yeah, it is the Ace of Wands, but the Ace of Books to the Ace of Swords. Uh, you have the Knight of Pentacles, you have the Ten of Pentacles, and you have the Eight of Wands. So, hidden energy. Okay, Spirit keeps saying this is hidden energy. Um, and maybe this is just because you're keeping it to yourself. But with the Ten of Pentacles here, I do feel like there is a lesson learned. This is absolutely a completion. This is, sorry, this is the Ten of Pentacles right here. Okay, this is a completion, all right? Lesson learned, time to move on to the next chapter in life or for many of us, the, the next book, okay? Um, and I, I am definitely feeling a deep sense of strong, solid foundation with this 10 of pentacles that's allowing you to really take flight and embody this king of pentacles energy, this independence. I'm really getting a very strong independent energy from this king of pentacles right now, okay? So then you have the eight of wands with the knight of pentacles. So um, the eight of wands is saying that you have clear and open air to move, right? Remember in the very beginning, I was channeling that space is being cleared for movement. There you go, eight of wands right there, okay? But with the knight of pentacles here, Again, in this deck, knights are griffins. With the Knight of Pentacles, you're it's you're 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 really you're really approaching this from a very mature place because it's like you're not trying to rush. Even though you have this open air or even this fast moving energy with the Eight of Wands, you're not trying to rush. I feel like the Eight of Wands can be seen as a minor arcana version of the Chariot, right? And the Chariot is like swift, like fucking fast as hell yeah but this is this is almost and i kind of i guess i, I kind of feel like this might be why it came out as the eight of wands and not the chariot because you have that potential you have that clear open space you have that ability that potential to take that to take on that full momentum but you're not trying to move that quickly because you don't want to fuck this up you don't want to mess it up you want to make sure you it's done right. What I'm getting with this Ten of Pentacles energy here is you've really learned a lot. You really learned a lot up until now. And you, you have every intention of putting that, putting what you've learned into practice and saying, and I'm very, I'm very much hearing an energy of, all right, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this for myself and I'm going to do it right. There's no going back from here. 
overall energy. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Well, overall energy or what your goal is, what your sights are set on. Ten of Cups. Family. Love. Relationship. Unconditional love. Emotional fulfillment. And you are absolutely walking away from what no longer serves you in order to receive that or achieve that. Eight of Cups. Okay. Leave that there. All right. Oh. I'm supposed to read all of these? Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Eight of Cups, Four of Swords, Seven of Cups, Three of Pentacles, Five of Swords. You know what? No. I mean, I understand what this is saying, but it's really just repeating everything that I've already said. So, okay. All right. Because especially because it, it ended on that Five of Swords there, right? Um, okay. So, uh, I, guess, I guess this is relating back to the Knight of Pentacles energy that I was just talking about. So, you're in direct opposition to this five of swords energy and there is a situation right now i guess what i guess what's being dealt with right now especially between the seven of cups and the four of swords here you're finally take and and with this three of pentacles because the three of pentacles in my opinion as a reader represents um self-mastery okay so you've come to a, a level of self-mastery where it's like you can walk away from this fighting five of swords energy and with the four of swords and the seven of cups it's like you're taking your time to meditate and figure out go uh, try and iron out any sort of confusion you might have dealt with and i feel like this confusion or this like blindfolded energy because you see how she's like covering her eyes here you were purposefully blindfolding yourself in the past but you're not allowing that to happen any longer so that's how you're really walking away from things that certain elements that no longer serve you all right that is excellent you guys okay so now what i want to do is i want to get a final closing message from the golden universal tarot and then i am going to get our oracle guidance from the crystal mandala deck today okay yeah all right cool last shuffle all righty kids final closing message from spirit Oh, the devil. With, I think, maybe the, f the four of something. It was the four of cups. Where are you? Where are you? You can't hide from... No, the four of swords. Okay. And then we're, they're saying we're going to take the top three cards... So we have the Seven of Wands, the Knight of Swords again, and the Queen of Swords. Yep. Overall energy is the Hierophant. Yikes. So, homeboy here in the Hierophant, he can't escape this. Oh shit, there's the Queen of Swords again. Underneath the Ten of Cups. Yeah, guys. And you see how the devil is here, but he's been thrown off to the wayside. It, literally, it looks like the devil is being removed from the equation completely. Five of Pentacles. Mm. Well, closing message from Spirit is to rest and meditate, okay? And work on your boundaries, Seven of Wands. Queen of Swords, Knight of Swords, do everything, and I mean everything within your power, to release yourself from these energies here, the Devil and the Five of Pentacles, because it's the Devil right here that wants to keep you feeling like you are less than, that you are lacking. The Devil energy, especially also, also this Hierophant energy. Now keep in mind, guys, the Hierophant does not have to be bad. 
okay. The Hierophant is also a teacher. But the Hierophant can also represent control, conformity, mind control, and all that icky stuff, right? And when we're talking in the sense of religion, religion was developed and grew into a mode of control. And one of their main tactics was to separate people, separate humans from God and put some sort of self-appointed individual as the medium, a human being, as the medium between God and humanity. They, they worked to remove our connection so that we had to rely on them in order to communicate with God. And you don't have to do that. You are a piece of God. You can communicate with God at any moment. That would never be denied to you. Indoctrination denies that, right? So what the message here is, four of swords, take a break, rest, recuperate if you need to, but meditate. Meditate on all of the ways that you have been allowing. And yes, yes. Now, if you're triggered by that, then face that. But you have been allowing the devil to make you feel less than, to make you feel like you're not good enough. Okay? And I say allow because the only way the devil has any power over you is if you physically hand it right over to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he does have his own tactics that, that allows him to weasel his way in and before you know it, you've given all your power away and now it's like, shit, what the fuck do I do now? Well, what the fuck do you do now? You take that power back. So you meditate on this. Figure out all of the ways that you have given your power away and then throw up your boundaries and take that shit back. And you do whatever it is you need to do within reasonable means, okay? But you do whatever it is you need to do to take your power back and keep that power. Yes? That is divine decree, they say. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Let's close out this reading with your oracle guidance. Here we go, kids. Oracle guidance. There it is right there. What do we have? Oh, yes! Card number 46. God Kali and Black Obsidian sacred revolution i know that shit is right <laughs> oh now keep in mind guys card number 46 that boils down to a 10 that is a completion and that is definitely a lesson learned here big lesson big 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 time okay yes y'all i know that shit is right okay here we go Sacred Revolution. We bring you the empowerment of Sacred Revolution. Revolution comes when a cycle of authority or power is ending. It has become inadequate for the task of leadership now required, and a new order must be established in its place. It is not simply a chapter within a book drawing to a close, but an entirely new book. Shut the front door. An entirely new book. Perhaps an entirely new genre. Opening up according to divine will unfolding. In such cases, subtle change is not going to cut it. You need radical action to bring about the new order. That new order may be in your world or in your own being. 
When revolution is sacred, the new order will be that which allows you to become more of yourself to successfully attain your spiritual goals. Oh man, I really, I really want to read this whole card. So we're going to do that, you guys. So settle in, kids, because it's story time. <laughs> Spirit goes, Eric, what are you talking about? It's been story time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to read this. Kali is a goddess not known for her subtlety. In the spiritual tradition from which she or originates, she is called on in times of war when demons seem to be getting the upper hand. She is the only warrior determined and vicious enough to destroy the destroyers. She is unstoppable, except for when divine consciousness tells her that her job is done. Her appearance marks a time of sacred revolution that cannot be stopped until it, has, until it has come to successful completion. The nature of revolution is the overthrowing of an existing hierarchy of control to replace it with a new one. Usually, there is a philosophical, yes, philosophical or political purpose behind the process, and that often involves forcibly overcoming an exploitive abuse of power by those in positions of authority. However, Revolution without a sacred component to it won't necessarily result in transformation or healing. There may be change, different political parties could come into power, for example, but often enough, it will be a case of the same problems with different perpetrators. What sets aside a revolution as sacred is when it comes at a time when genuine transformation rather than superficial change is possible. Change takes courage. We have to be willing to let go of what we have known and bear uncertainty whilst we explore new possibilities and eventually evolve into a new way of being. Even with that willingness, there are times when a pattern of the past has become so lodged in the psyche that gentle evolution is not possible. You could imagine it like a person screaming in unnecessary panic. You may try to take you may try talking to them in soothing tones, but if they are about to jump in a car and drive away, putting themselves and others in mortal danger, then a sharp slap might be in order to snap them out of hysteria and into the present moment. It's extreme, but it's helpful and necessary. In our inner world, the hysteria and panic might relate to letting go of a relationship we believe is our life raft. I'm sorry, life raft. When in truth, if we keep holding on to it, it's going to pull us right over the edge of a cliff down a life-ending waterfall. Or perhaps it is a way of relating to power based in fear rather than loving empowerment. No matter how hard we try, we just can't seem to give up our attachment to feeling in control, or we are so attached to the life we have known, we aren't willing to fly free from the nest, stretching our wings and discovering our destiny. When gentler methods aren't effective, let me say that again, when gentler methods aren't effective and divine timing requires change to happen now, sacred revolution is invoked. Kali may stomp into your life and kick you out of the nest so that you may realize you can fly. She may rip the life raft, right life raft out of your hands, causing you to sputter temporarily until you stand up and realize you can walk you can just walk safely out of the rampaging water. Or she may knock the control freak dominating your mind on the head and step up, I'm sorry, and set up her own temporary divine dictatorship where she simply repeats, let love yourself and let go until you do just that. When the Oracle of Sacred Revolution comes to you, you can be sure that you and your life are going to change. It might feel as if your hand is forced, or even if you are choosing to go with the process, that it is wild and out of your control. It will be, but that doesn't make it uh, unloving or unsafe. When revolution is sacred, it is divine love realigning your life. And although there are prob there probably I'm sorry, and although there will probably be chaos, you can be sure that the new order eventually imposed will be worth it. Viva la revolution. <laughs> yes, fucking right, y'all. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. 
Um, again, we do have happy hour tonight. I'm going to put happy hour information in the description box below in case you guys are interested in getting in on that. But with that said, I love you guys so very much and I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again either this evening or tomorrow for our next cup of coffee. Yeah? Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye.